Welcome back to another pen talk, another vintage pen talk, another vintage Schaefer balance pen talk. So here we have uh, two excellent examples of the balance green jade. One of these I bought in the Philly Pen Show last month, which is this one here, which has the most unique Schaefer nib in my many vintage Schaefer's. And here's one that I have had in my collection for a number of years. These are very, very similar pens. Uh, even though the material looks different, I think that's just a result of the fact that there were variations in this material. The white dot is also much whiter here, and here it seems to have aged and discolored a little bit. It's certainly not as white. Both of these have the classic hump clip from uh, Schaefer, which is definitely, it sig signifies an earlier model of the balance. The same type of lever feed. The one I got in the Philly Pen show is, shows a little bit of discoloration in the barrel where the, uh, the one that I've had from my collection is, is pretty much uh, in great shape as far as color goes, but it doesn't have as much white in it as the one in the Philly Pen Show, which might be somewhat of an indication of why it survived from discoloration. Here's uh, an ad from 1929. This is kind of like the classic Schaefer balance ad. It has the ice skater on up on one skate in a perfect balance uh, situation. And down here we see an example of the green jade balance along with an ivory and black and a uh, black pencil. Let you write relaxed. That's kind of the theme here. So this is also promoting the lifetime white dot. And actually the, the natural shape and balance of the pen is one of the things that they are definitely promoting here. And this pen is, this ad is from uh, 1929. So here are uh, the balances compared against some flat top versions. This one is a uh, flat top Schaefer. It doesn't have the hump clip. So this is probably earlier, probably 25, 26. It does have the white dot on the top of the cap. About the same gold band at the bottom of the cap and a similar lever fill. And this is a non-branded pen. Just wanted to show this as an example of how this green jade came in many versions. This one cleaned up quite well. Um, it also has a kind of interesting similar type of clip to it, but uh, no branding. Comparing the green jade balances against some other balances that I have. I have a, a few balances and I have added to my balance collection recently. Um, they are readily available and at a reasonable price for a nice well-made vintage pen. This is the one I did a restoration on um, a few months ago. This is one I haven't done a restoration on, but this one has about one of the better nibs of, of this series. And this is the ivory and black one I also did a video on um, after this one. I wanted to just basically uh, give you an example of size. So these are kind of two standard sizes here. They're a little bit shorter than the green jade versions. But when you compare what I would call maybe the oversized version, you can see that this one is slightly longer, but certainly uh, wider in girth. And again, it also has that standard um, hump clip that we've seen on the, on the green ones. So as my viewers know, um, the real test of a pen is how the nib works on paper. So these are all unscrew caps, very typical of, of this pen. And if we look at these nibs, we'll see that there's a, a a decent amount of similarity here. They both have a fairly short section, but 
you don't really feel the thread so you can hold it basically anywhere so the fact that there's only a little bit of um, hard rubber section here really doesn't impact the use of the pen both of these are lifetime nibs I'm trying to use a combination of sunlight and LED lights to bring out the details in these two nibs I mean I these could have been made in two different locations um, but there is definitely difference in the stampings on the two nibs. I mean, they have the same information on them. They say lifetime. They have uh, the uh, unique serial number. The font's a little different. The size of the font's a little different. And uh, the one nib's a little longer, but I think that has to do with uh, the type of nib it is. And the one on the left is the one from the Philly Pen Show, and that's really a nice um, stub nib. We turn them over, we'll see the classic uh, Schaefer feed, the comb feed. And, you know, the feed kind of reaches the same distance, so the only real difference in the nibs is you could imagine that uh, the stub nib has just uh, kind of been cut off a little bit. Um, and there is tipping material on it. It's not a pure stub. And my fountain pen books, and they're great sources of reference. I like to understand the pens and the history behind them. So this is an excellent book that I got uh, quite a while ago from the New York Fountain Pen Hospital. It was probably one of the first really coffee table style books. It's excellently done quality wise and also from a content viewpoint. Here's a photograph of the green jade examples that they have in the book. The green jade balances. This says they're from 1930 to 1933. They're made of radite, that DuPont uh, celluloid material. And they say it was introduced in 1930, even though the ad that I have shows it in 1929. And as they mentioned, it came in a, a variety of colors and sizes and shapes. Some people might call the longer Schaefer pens telephone pens. But here's a depiction of the actual types of telephone pens, and they had a black section at the bottom, which was actually used to go into the rotary dial. As you can see, they're called telephone dialers. Here's another book that I picked up at a, at a, at a pen show from uh, Pendemonium. Excellent price. I uh, really enjoyed the book. One of the things about books, uh, and this is the one that... Uh, Brian Goulet uh, talked about when he talked about books is all of them I, I find differences in descriptions difference in time frames so you really need a lot of references if you want to kind of get an overview of everything in this book is a great photo of a couple different varieties of the green jade balances that they made and this is a, a rod that supposedly was uh, machined you got a pencil, you got a lady's pen with a ring on top, and then you have your more classic balance. And you notice one thing that's different between this pen and my pen is the clip doesn't extend down to the cap band, which uh, it does on mine. So this is a later version, uh, probably, you know, 33, 34. The description really doesn't uh, go into any details about dates, but it does call it an iconic uh, pen. Thing. Um that is obvious. These pens are balance pens, um, unscrew cap. I mean, they fit well in the hand uh, without doing anything else. I mean, that's certainly nice. They're light. We'll throw those dimensions up for you. But they also cap very easily. The cap posts pretty deeply, very securely. And again, really doesn't change the weight. And like the uh, Franklin Christoph 02, the cap, I think, actually adds to the feel of the pen when it writes. So this is the one for my collection. Don't worry about the hard start. Um, I've had caps on and off, but once you get ink flowing in this pen, it flows very well. So there's quite a history with me and this nib. And uh, the challenge is when I first uh, inked up this one and, and the, um, the, you know, the stub one, I wanted to use the same ink in to give you an example of how the uh, same ink would look different in two different pens. But the Robert Oyster 
uh, jade ink would not work in this pen at all. I mean, it literally didn't work. As you can see, it does have a little bit of a hard start. This is a, a Sailor um, Muramai. Muram we'll give you that ink there. And um, I think Sailor inks, in my experiences, with a, with a fine nib like this, do have a tendency to dry uh, quickly on the nib. But I, I thought the Sailor ink would work well in this pen. Uh, once I put it in, I was very happy with it. This is that pine green, I think they, they refer to it as. With almost every one of my Balance Schaefer nibs, they're extremely smooth. You know, they glide across the paper. Uh, most vintage requires a little bit of pressure. I would say the, the nice soft Waterman nibs are probably ones that require the least amount of pressure. And as you increase pressure, of course, you're going to get some flex. You're not going to get any flex out of these. They advertise these as being able to be used on uh, three carbon sheets. So that's where it goes. So... Again, if you like, I'd call this an extra fine uh, nib. And like I guess I have probably a fair number of these. And they're all very, very good writers. Uh, whether they're lifetime or not, the nibs are all uh, consistently good. You know, this one, uh, when I had that problem with the green jade ink, I flushed it. I soaked it overnight in, in my ammonia and soap solution. I used my brass shims, my stainless steel shims. And I think I got it to a point in time now where I'm, I'm very happy with it. So now we're switching over to the stub nib. And I mean, there couldn't be much more of a difference between these two pens. This is also extremely smooth. I love this Robert Oster Jade because it really uh, does some interesting shading, especially with uh, a stub uh, nib. I used it in the 0.6 uh, Nemo scene, and, and I loved it there. Uh, so this is the first time I put it into a pen like this. This one actually makes less noise on the paper than the extra fine one, but that's what you would expect because uh, the nib is broader, so there's more nib in touch and contact with the paper. So it's going to be smoother. And this also has no flex to it, but because of the stub, you do get um, variations between horizontal and vertical lines. So I just want to put things in perspective. So I'm going to bring out uh, this Schaefer, which um, I recently restored. And this is a nib that when I uh, uh, brought it to Philly's show and Beth wrote with it, she fell in love with it. But then I ended up uh, finding a balance for her. This has a two-tone nib in it. Again, I have it on, um, you know, uh, telephoto, so it's going to take a while to focus, not as quickly as it does when it's on wide angle. So this is similar. As you can see, the shade for the lifetime, but it's just two-tone, and that's that's uh, platinum that they said they played at the end with. Also, the clip is the newer version of the clip. It doesn't have a hump in it. It's flattened here. It's not a round ball, so that's nice. I love the uh, design of this with the green stripes. I think it was called Marine Green. This is very, very smooth. The nib has a little, I'm sorry about that. The nib has a little bit of an upturn at the end slight upturn and, and that really um, I think adds to the writing experience but not everybody likes that. This also has uh, a rounded uh, bottom to the comb feed which is the other ones the older versions had a flat uh, feed in them. I'll put the ink up um, later I'm not remembering what was in this pen but this is a pen also I've had a number of these inked up for long periods of time and they as long as the cap's on them and the ink is a little bit wet, they're going to write first time every time. They're, they're very reliable, and I think Schaefer had a, a good reputation throughout uh, this period of time in the, in the 20s and 30s as producing an excellent writing instrument. So thank you for viewing. Hopefully you enjoyed another uh, historical trip and, and some experiences with what I think is an excellent line of vintage pens.
As I mentioned, they're uh, relatively available um, and relatively affordable. And if you don't mind a, a stiff nib, but you want a, a great writer that is mostly extra fine, but you know you may occasionally uh, hit the jackpot and find um, a nice lucky one like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Please comment. Um, I appreciate the interactions with uh, my audience. So may you have many great writing experiences. Enjoy them. Life is to be enjoyed, and, and writing for me is one of those enjoyments. Bye.